Hi, I'm Michael Dare, and this is The Bottom Shelf. This is where tapes end up, because they simply don't belong anywhere else. I mean, where do you file Beyond the Valley of the Ultra Vixens, anyway? It's pretty funny, but it's not a comedy. It's got sex, but it's nowhere near an X, and it's certainly not a musical, but it's got lots of songs. So it ends up on the bottom shelf, next to things like, oh, Harold and Maude, the video cabal, and how to grow giant toadstools in your basement. A lot of tapes have been stuck here for so long, you're probably used to passing them by without taking a closer look. Likely Stories is a series of comic anthologies that includes this peculiar musical version of The Elephant Man. I have the deformity of some enormity. They call me the Elephant Man. I don't look like Paul Newman or any other human you've seen. I'm the Elephant Man. I'm the Elephant Man. And I'm happy to be. There are supposedly a couple more volumes of likely stories, but I've only found volume two, which my local video store files under documentaries. So I guess it's actually possible to take this cover seriously. And it's that straight-faced approach to humor that makes likely stories so genuinely funny. They're basically a series of unrelated sketches starring people like Danny DeVito and Harry Shearer, and there's at least one hysterical scene for each dud. So likely stories are definite renters from the bottom shelf. Unless you were lucky enough to take the whole four hours off of cable TV, this is the most you're ever going to get to see of Comic Relief. Starring Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg, and Billy Crystal, Comic Relief was the Woodstock of stand-up, giving a historical and hysterical overview of American comedy, covering everyone from Henny Youngman to Bobcat Goldthwait. I lost my, I lost my job! No, 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 I didn't really lose my job. I mean, I know where my job is still. Just when I go there, there's this new guy doing it. It's all for a worthy cause, with every penny going to the homeless. And it's got Williams and Crystal as two chorus boys. Uh, well, <laughs> I am glad to be here. Uh, look, can you tell what religion I am? <laughs> oh. Look at you, what are these colors? Looks like an aquarium blew up. I know. Think I look like the gay Clydesdale? Uh, easy, easy, how old are you? <laughs> how are you? I haven't seen you in so long. Oh my God, I've been on the road. I was doing Kismet with Lucille Ball. Oh really? Yes. Oh, who played the Alfred Drake role? She did. No. Oh yeah, Tom Waits. Watch out. <laughs> oh, you're so nasty. Oh, it's incredible. I also was, I was in the road company of Deliverance. We had a thing like, squeal like you know me, squeal like you need oh, me. Oh God. <laughs> Funny stuff. Comic Relief is another renter from the bottom shelf. So by now you're probably thinking this jerk likes everything. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. I mean, I just decided to be nice to you, that's all. But there's some tapes that are so loathsome, so despicable, so utterly lacking in any quality whatsoever that it's up to me, your video martyr, to search them out, watch them, and tell you about them. With the Mies Commission on the rampage, a lot more tapes of the R-rated variety get tucked away on the bottom shelf, so if you're thinking of watching some of these as an act of civil disobedience, I'm not going to stop you, but let me give you a few pointers. Right, let's get one thing straight right off the bat. Nobody said anything about stripping in public. In How to That's Strip for Your Lover, this woman teaches a class in stripping to this troop of women. Of course, there's this shrinking violet sitting in the back who thinks that stripping in public is a disgusting, demeaning, and degrading thing to do. Frankly, I feel that stripping in public is a disgusting, degrading, demeaning thing to do. Everyone's given a brief history of the art of disrobing. And finally, they're each given opportunities to bear it all in a series of terrible fantasy sequences.
There's another ambient video for you. Room full of assholes. These guys are terrifying. And they're portrayed as the final great perk fantasy audience for a budding stripper. <laughs> Tapes like this belong beneath the bottom shelf. Now, if you're really in the mood for something tacky, Rhino Video has done us the favor of releasing Orgy of the Dead, starring Criswell. Now, here's how the movie starts. Grab yourself a stopwatch and see how long it takes him to lose his place. I am Criswell. For years, I have told the almost unbelievable, related the unreal. Orgy of the Dead is the brainchild of the singularly untalented Ed Wood Jr. It's a pitifully incompetent horror film that's actually just a lame excuse for a bunch of women to dance around in their underwear. This nice young couple are driving along at night, or is it day? No matter, she screams, and their car goes off the road. Soon they stumble upon what looks like amateur night of the undead. Could it be some kind of college initiation? It's an initiation, all right, but not of a college as you and I know them. Nothing alive looks like that. Except, of course, for a gallon of scanties. It's as though the casting call went out for a dozen horrible demons and a dozen strippers. The demons were sent to North Beach, and the strippers ended up in this cheesy horror film. This tape isn't just bad, it's jaw-drop bad. It's like an encyclopedia of ludicrous dialogue. Torture, torture, it pleasures me. Your Puritan upbringing holds you back from my monsters, but certainly doesn't hurt your art of kissing. It would seem that the Wolfman would have you for his own. <coughs> ah, there is always time. All in good time. There is always time. You shall have your pleasures. That I decree. I have promised both the Wolfman and the Mummy a reward. It could be that you are that reward. I'm from Om Loka. Is that a main? Where is it? It's the topmost spiritual planet. It's not even in this galaxy. You have to go through the sun to get there. You have to go through the center of the sun. So, all right. Okay, you got about a minute. All right. Now, the shock this month is that there's actually a superb videotape with stripping as its centerpiece. The documentary Stripper is a film you could actually watch with a woman without making her feel disgusted, demeaned, and degraded. It covers the first national strip off in Las Vegas. And it's a sensitive and pretty fascinating look at a lifestyle that can be equally erotic and pathetic. The eliminations for the Golden Sea String Awards are about to begin. Stand by, playback. I'm not a physical body. I'm not a conditioned mind. Stripper is serious stuff. It's a well-made film about eroticism that's just as interesting when the subjects keep their clothes on. But only five will be chosen to perform in the finals tomorrow evening for a grand prize of $25,000. So once again, to recapitulate, How to Strip for Your Lover is bad, bad. Orgy of the Dead is good, bad. Rent it and make fun of it. Stripper is great, good. It raises several disturbing questions and one undeniable truth. No one wishes to see a man dance. How about an incredibly young Jack Nicholson grooving to the beat in a piece of 60s obscuridelia called Psych Out? It's directed by Richard Rush, who later made Stuntman, and it's one of my personal favorite nostalgia pieces. Nicholson plays Stoney, a genuine hippie, who has to deal with things like runaway deaf girls and Henry Jaglum freaking out on drugs. I've been seeing a couple of things, but I can come out of it anytime I want to. You know, all I, all, all I have to do is, is snap my fingers and I come out of it. It's a, all I ever have to do is snap my fingers, man. Hey, Warren, snap your finger. <sighs> well, you see, it's not working this time. I, it's just now. To close the bottom shelf, I'd like to give an unqualified rave to a series of tapes that aren't just renters. Now, I recommend buying as many episodes as you can of Simon & Schuster's new releases of the BBC Sherlock Holmes. They're all one hour long, and you can gobble them down like peanuts. My mind rebels at stagnation. Give me problems. Give me work. Give me the most abstruse cryptogram, the most intricate analysis, and I'm in my proper atmosphere. 
Then I can dispense with artificial stimulants. But I abhor the dull routine of existence. I crave mental exaltation. That is why I've chosen my own profession, or rather, created it. But I am the only one in the world. Now, believe me, I'm just as sick of Sherlock Holmes as you are. But Jeremy Brett puts all the others to shame. He's arrogant, self-centered, and paranoid, and he doesn't care if you like him or not. Here's a scene you've caught a million times. Holmes is conducting his investigation with Watson when suddenly the police inspector shows up. Inspector Forbes, I believe. Mr. Holmes, I'm a very busy man. I have other cases besides this one. But none so vital to the national interest, I'll wager. May I introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson? What do you want from me, Holmes? I know about your methods. You're ready enough to use our information. Then you try and finish the case yourself and bring discredit on us. On the contrary, in my last 53 cases, my name has appeared in only four, and the police have the credit in 49. I don't blame you for not knowing this. You are young and inexperienced. But if you wish to get on in your duties, you will work with me and not against me. Now then, what steps have you taken? You know, it's hard to find something impeccable, but these Sherlock Holmes tapes are. As a matter of fact, I defy anyone, even the video watchdog, to find a single flaw in any of them. So that's it from the bottom shelf. Thank you. Cut to commercial. Cut to commercial. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not working. I, uh, 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 uh,